Now, I do admit that I have a lot of videos on things that you have to avoid because they're bad for you. But today I'm going to talk about an addiction, I'm sorry, um, a drink that you won't have to avoid. And I will be the first to admit that I am completely and utterly addicted to coffee and its benefits. And there's one thing in coffee called chlorogenic acid. It's in other foods as well but it's definitely in coffee. If you drink green coffee, you will have more of this chemical. And I have done other videos on the benefits of coffee, adding butter and MCT oil to your coffee to help you fast longer. But there's some interesting research on coffee in that it can help decrease the risk for metabolic syndrome. It gives you neural protection for your brain, cardiovascular protection, and even studies that show that it can be anti-carcinogenic. Coffee definitely can suppress your appetite, which is good to do in the morning if you're fasting. And also this compound right here can act to help reduce inflammation. And there's a significant amount of magnesium in coffee, as well as certain vitamins, specifically B3 and B2. Now, of course, these benefits are not going to occur if you're drinking pots of coffee like I used to drink in college. So I'm talking about a very moderate or small amount of coffee. Personally, I recommend only drinking one cup of coffee in the early morning, but we have this liver here and the liver actually does a lot of things. One thing it does is it makes bile. Okay, so the bile is produced by the liver, drains down these little tubes right here and gets stored in the gallbladder. And so a lot of people have the question, is coffee going to aggravate my gallbladder or create kidney stones or contribute to my fatty liver? Well, actually, it does the opposite. It will help to thin the bile. It can help to decrease the risk for gallstones because gallstones come from a condition where you have this super concentrated cholesterol that turns into crystals, then forms gallstones but it's not the cholesterol that makes the stone. It's the lack of bile salts that allow the concentration to occur. So really gallstones occur because you are deficient in bile. Well, it just so happens that coffee can help produce more bile and thin the bile and prevent these cholesterol crystals from occurring. Now, if you have gallstones, I would highly recommend you also start taking uh, like purified bile salts to help you with this process. But just so you know, coffee can help prevent gallstones. And as far as the liver goes, coffee is hepatoprotective. So these phytonutrients in the coffee can actually protect the liver from harmful things. The other thing that's really cool about coffee is it can increase fatty acid oxidation. That basically means it can help break down fat from your liver, especially if you have a fatty liver. And it does this indirectly through the microbiome, which is actually quite fascinating. So Coffee apparently helps your friendly bacteria. It also helps stimulate this hormone that will help contract the gallbladder. The gallbladder is there to concentrate the bile. So when you eat, it contracts. And then that bile then can mix with the food and help you extract fat-soluble nutrients. Well, if your gallbladder is sluggish for whatever reason, drinking coffee can help stimulate the gallbladder so you have this contraction and this release of the bile. And one reason why I'm doing this video is because I'm, I'm focusing on this area right here, making you very aware of this area in your body, because this is an area of a lot of problem for so many people that they don't have any idea that this is the root problem. And I'm talking about um, bile sludge. The bile should normally be thin and flowing. Many times it thickens. And then the cholesterol starts building up in here and it backs up into the liver. And the pain that you'll feel or the discomfort or the tightness will be right up through here in your right shoulder blade, right through in here. And through the back, right through here, through the rhomboid, it can go right up through the head through here. It can literally create tension and pull these vertebrae out and pinch a nerve that goes down your right side. Now on that note, if you haven't seen my video on the relationship between the gallbladder and the right shoulder, I'm going to put that video up right here. Check it out.